Welcome to Black Coal Woodworking. My name's Matt. Today I'm going to be making a mallet that looks a lot like Thor's hammer. Would he use this if he were a woodworker? I don't know. But ever since I made this thing, everybody keeps telling me it looks like Thor's hammer. I don't remember what his hammer is called, but I think it's like mule deer or something like that. Anyway, check it out. You guys can make one too. It's actually a lot of fun and pretty easy. The first thing I did was to get a log from the fire pit and start to mill it. I wanted to make a flat bottom and one of the sides, that way I can get it through the bandsaw and cut some boards out of it. The wood I'm using is poplar. It's a really easy wood to work with and I think it looks really nice. Here at the bandsaw I'm making strips of wood that are just over 3 quarter inch wide. That way after I'm done planing they're going to be the right thickness that I need. These strips are going to be going on the sides of the mallet. Sending these pieces of wood through the planer is a really easy way to get rid of those marks made by the bandsaw. These pieces are going to get cut in half so that I can glue them back together vertically, making the hammer as tall as I need. This is how the pieces are going to get glued up. I've obviously got a gap in the middle when I put them together and I'm going to get rid of that gap by using the jointer because I've got to joint them anyway for the glue up and may as well just run them through a few more times just to get them back down to size. After doing a quick measurement, it was pretty obvious that I needed to trim one of them down a little bit more so that they lined up when I put them together. Thankfully that didn't take long. I went out back to the fire pit again, grabbed another log. This time I'm going to make the handle and the pieces for the mallet head. Sometimes I like to start milling logs with the bandsaw, this time I figured I would start with the jointer just to see if it went any faster and I have to get it to the jointer anyway, so let's see how it goes. These are going to be about an inch and a quarter wide, that way I'll have a bit of depth for the mallet and that's where the BBs are going to go inside as well. This is the handle itself, which is an inch and a quarter wide by an inch. More bandsaw mark cleanup at the planer. These pieces of wood that I'm cutting are going to make up the very front and rear of the mallet head. I'm going to glue them up and sandwich them in with a handle. And here's me trying to glue that piece to the clamp. I don't know what I was thinking. This is what the inside of the mallet looks like. I'm gluing down all the pieces to the bottom of the mallet, or I guess the side of the mallet head in this case. And then once those are all glued down, except for the handle, I'm not going to glue that, not yet. I want to be able to slide it up and down so that I can uh, seat it properly on the, on the top of the head. You'll see that in a little bit. And, of course, I want to fill this thing with copper BBs. So, thanks kids, your BBs are being put to good use. You'll notice that the hammer we're gluing up here isn't the same one as you've been watching. And that's because I forgot to film this part with that one. Fortunately for me, as soon as that one was done, my son wanted a hammer too. So, 
you get to see the one that we made for him. All right, it's all glued up. All I gotta do is wait. Once it was dry, I marked out the angles I wanted for the mallet face and then cut them out at the bandsaw. With a test tap or two, I could really tell this thing was gonna be a lot of fun to use. Time to clean up the outsides of the hammer before sanding. The more I can take off here, the less sanding I have to do. Obviously, I'll spend more time at the bandsaw if I can help it. I started sanding with a 60 grit because I really like how fast it cuts through the wood. I took my time with all the sanding here because a lot of it actually needed to be shaped a little bit as well especially since this was going to be more of a live edge kind of a hammer. I needed to really take my time around the sides and, and corners just to kind of keep that live edge look. At the same time, I realized that when you sand something a live edge, you really don't have to be as careful as you do if you're trying to make a finer piece of furniture. I realized this mallet's a little on the big side, but that was kind of the point. I wanted to make something that was beefy and, and felt really good to use and hold. After the sanding was done, I realized that there were some cracks I needed to fill. So I grabbed the glue and sawdust and mixed it together and basically just shoved it into the cracks. And after that was done, I went to do some sanding and it uh, really helped make everything all smooth and, and look like it was all glued up really nice. Since I'd been sanding with that particular um, species of wood anyway, all that uh, sawdust inside the sander was perfect for this. And I took to shaping the handle and basically used the, the sander to round over the edges and there was a bit of a dip in the handle anyway just because of the piece of wood that I used. So that kind of worked out nice. It was a really good spot for my fingers. I figured out how long I wanted my handle and then pushed it back up through the mallet head so I could cut that part off and then marked out the um, place where I wanted to put the wedges in so that I could drive that handle out, basically make it flare and with some glue compression fit it into the mallet head. I cut the slots into that top of the handle and very quickly realized that my wedges didn't fit and that's only because I didn't cut those slots wide enough so I just threw it back into the bandsaw made them a little bit wider and then everything fit real nice. I got my wedges in, all ready to go. Pushed the handle down and then realized I should probably add some glue to the top of that mallet. That'll probably help. So I started gluing and realized later on that I don't have to glue that far down either because as you saw earlier, that mallet's hollow about an inch down. With all the glue in place, I hammered the handle down into the correct position, added the wedges again, and started to hammer them into place. I didn't know if I needed to hammer them one at a time, or maybe I should have do both kind of at the same time, just so they would actually wedge on both sides properly. So I tried to get them a bit evenly, and that seemed to work out pretty good. Time to cut off the excess of those wedges and then sand them 
into place so they blend in basically. So here I'm still using a 60 grit. Haven't quite yet gone to the 150 grit that I end with. A little more wooden crack spackle and away we go. I really like the finishing process. It really makes the piece come alive. Here I'm using a mixture of coconut oil and beeswax. Normally I would use boiled linseed oil and beeswax, but I wanted to go for a finish that was less yellow. And I thought coconut oil might do the trick. You guys can be the judge. The mixture that I'm using here is one part coconut oil to two parts beeswax. Once I apply the wax to the handle, I really try to rub it into the wood deep. That way it will feel really, really nice. The wax won't protect the wood from being dented, but it will make the wood somewhat water resistant. I really like how the wood grain starts to pop here. Again, I'm trying to get the wood to not turn so yellow. I'm not sure if it really accomplished that. I guess I would have to compare a boiled linseed oil wax directly to this coconut oil wax and see what the difference is next to each other. One thing I can tell you about coconut oil wax is that it smells really good. Also the feel of it is really really buttery soft. I don't know if it's softer than boiled linseed oil but it feels really good. So the mallet's done. It was a lot of fun to make. If you guys want to make one, I'm sure you'll find that it's actually not that hard, it was, and it's a lot of fun. My son actually went and made one as well. Of course, I helped him out a little bit. He's been smashing stuff all over the house now. <laughs> so if I've earned your subscription today, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time.